To finish off this look at the wrecks of Operation Crossroads, we come to the final two wrecks that have been discovered thus far. These two are not, however, the final shipwrecks related to the test. Quite a few ships were sunk at sea, at various points and for various reasons, after the tests were complete. These include everything from battleships to submarines, as basically any type of ship used at Crossroads was, eventually, scuttled somewhere else. To keep things simple, I'm only going to make specific note of the warships from Crossroads in this video. The auxiliaries, the transports, the LSTs and the like, those would probably be 10 minutes of listing off names and sunk off Kwajalein or sunk off California. I won't make people sit through that. Though that will, admittedly, be the case with the destroyers to at least some extent. With that disclaimer done, I'll timestamp the video as usual, and let's get started with the two wrecks that have been discovered. The more famous of the two is probably USS Nevada, discovered in May 2020 by Ocean Infinity and Search. This battleship, famous for her actions at Pearl Harbor, had been painted bright orange and was the intended target for Test Able, hence the blinding paint job. As it would turn out, the bomber managed to miss the bright orange battleship and drop the bomb on top of an unfortunate transport instead. As such, Nevada survived Abel with minimal damage, and while Baker did more damage, the real issue was her age and how irradiated she was. Nevada, after some repairs to keep her afloat, would be thoroughly studied by the Navy before she was expended as a gunnery target in July 1948 off the coast of Hawaii. For decades, her wreck remained missing, until, again, quite recently. Her wreck is upside down on the seabed, some 15,400 feet, or 4,700 meters, down. Damage from these shells and torpedoes that sent her to the bottom are still visible, as is her number 36 on her stern. Unfortunately, since she capsized, it is difficult to make out much more about her hull. The damage beneath the waterline is visible, as is the fact that her bow and stern both tore free as she sank. In the debris field around the battleship, pieces of her bridge and deck are visible, along with the tripod masts and her turrets. More bizarrely, there is also an overturned M26 Pershing tank. This had been placed on her deck during the crossroads tests, and apparently no one bothered to remove it in the two years between that and her final sinking. To be fair, the tank was probably irradiated and damaged, but the fact it remained aboard through two nukings, decontamination efforts, and Nevada being used as a target ship is a funny historical side note. Also, in common with a lot of deepwater American wrecks, past the obvious damage, Nevada is still pretty well preserved. Her paint is recognizable, and she isn't covered in rust or marine life to the same extent as shallower wrecks. Unfortunately, unlike the aircraft carrier wrecks in the South Pacific, there aren't many pictures of Nevada's wreck to examine and draw conclusions from. So with that in mind, Let's move on to the other shipwreck that's been found in recent years. That shipwreck is USS Independence, the nameship of her class of light carrier. She survived both of the atomic tests, though only for a certain value of survived. Her watertight integrity was intact, but everything above the waterline was blasted in and crumpled. She was torn up by the Abel blast, and was certainly not going to be launching any aircraft after it. But, as said, she survived. She survived Abel, and she survived Baker. With her radioactive hulk surplus to requirements, no efforts were made to repair her past the absolutely necessary repairs to keep her afloat. Instead, she was studied like Nevada to see what the after-effects of the bombings were on her hull. This work would last until 1951, when Independence was scuttled off the coast of California on January 29th making her one of the longest-lived of the Crossroads targets. As for her wreck, that was found relatively early, in comparison to a lot of deepwater wrecks in the Pacific. In 2009, her wreck was located in 2,600 feet, 790 meters of water, by sonar scanning. Later, in 2015, NOAA surveyed her wreck in more detail. She was found to be pretty much completely intact, excepting the damage done at Crossroads. A follow-up expedition in 2016 sent an ROV down to take a closer look, 
finding the ship in almost pristine condition, considering her age and relatively, compared to something like the Leyte Rex, shallow depth. Her flight deck and stern are in rough shape, as could be expected, since that was where the worst damage from crossroads was located. Gaping holes in her flight deck show her hangar, where aircraft and barrels lay, undisturbed and silently rusting away. Those barrels, by the way, are radioactive waste. Several have rusted open over the years, though they are apparently not a major risk between the depth and the overall decay of radioactive material over time. Certainly you aren't going to want to pick up one of the gloves sitting in the pile of discarded waste, but on a sliding scale of is this dangerous or not, the barrels aboard Independence are pretty low down that scale. Not least because she's chest plane so deep that you need specialized equipment to even get that deep to begin with. That being said, on Independence, the damage on her hull is well recorded from the aftermath of Crossroads, and she remains more or less as she did when she sank, her flight deck broken and her hull dented in across her length. It is interesting to look at her as the last member of her class around in semi-decent shape. She's fairly well preserved and intact, nuke damage aside. But there isn't really much new to see here, compared to something like finding Nevada broken in pieces. That aside, with these ships covered, we now come to the end of the wrecks we know the location of from Operation Crossroads. The remaining vessels, while we know where they were sunk, have yet to be discovered on the seabed. These, as said at the start, range in size from old battleships right down to something like an LST. Now I will look at each type of warship wreck in order of size, beginning with the missing battleships and going right down to the submarines. Though, again, I won't be covering the transports or LSTs in this video. Let's begin with the battleships. When it comes to the battleships, there are two such vessels still missing, both of which are the less famous sister in the modern day compared to their sister ships, these being USS New York and USS Pennsylvania, less famous compared to Texas and Arizona, respectively. The older of the two, New York, survived both Abel and Baker in reasonably good condition. Her upper works were beat up, though not to the same extent as Arkansas was after the first test. Baker didn't do sufficient damage to put New York at real risk of sinking, and after the tests were over, the old battle wagon was boarded and decontaminated. Once she had been repaired to the point of being safe for towing, New York set off for Kwajalein, where she arrived on August 24th. Formally decommissioned on August 29th, 1946, New York was taken to Pearl Harbor and extensively studied for nearly two years. At the conclusion of which, in July 1948, she was towed out to sea, much like Nevada, and subjected to eight hours of pounding by ships and planes. New York would ultimately capsize and sink off the coast of Hawaii on July 8th, 1948. In this, she was the second of the surviving battleships to sink, going under almost a month before Nevada, though in a similar geographic area. I will caveat here, though, that just because both battleships were sunk off Hawaii, that doesn't mean it will be easier to find New York now that Nevada has been found. Finding a shipwreck is by no means an easy task in deep water, even if you have a general idea of where to look. Now, with New York done, what about Pennsylvania? Well, she went into the tests in worse shape than New York. Pennsylvania had been damaged by a torpedo attack late in the war. She was, in fact, the last major American warship damaged by Japanese action. Couple this with having one of her shafts run wild while under sail, necessitating it being cut loose and left to drop to the bottom of the sea, she wasn't in the greatest shape going into the crossroads tests. And yet, Pennsylvania is probably the battleship that came out of the tests with the least outward damage. Abel did minimal damage to her upper works, and Baker did negligible to minor physical damage. The end result is that she was at no risk of sinking, although she was heavily contaminated and radioactive. So much so that she wasn't even towed to Pearl Harbor for later gunnery trials. Pennsylvania was, instead, towed to Kwajalein and studied there until February 1948. On the 10th of that month, she was towed off the atoll and scuttled there and then. This leaves her the first of the battleships to survive the tests, more or less intact, 
only to be sunk off the coast later on. She would also be the crown jewel of any survey off Kwajalein, which has quite a few ships, as we'll see later in the video. That covers the battleships, so next in line are the cruisers, of which only two, the Pensacola sisters, need to be covered in this video. The stories of USS Pensacola and USS Salt Lake City are fairly similar when it comes to Operation Crossroads. The two cruisers were old and clapped out by the time they were consigned to the atomic test. They were destined for the scrapyard at best, and being assigned to Crossroads at least gave them one last success under their belts. Because, in spite of their age and relatively light construction, both of the cruisers survived. They survived remarkably intact, actually, as neither was at any real risk of sinking. Now, Pensacola and Salt Lake City do show similar damage from the test. Their superstructures were scorched, torn, and twisted. The exact damage varies between the two ships, but in general terms, it is broadly similar, such as collapses in the funnels or bent masts. The underwater damage was fairly minimal. Both cruisers were able to be towed off in short order for studying the after effects of the test. This would last until 1948, where the stories of the two sister ships diverge. Salt Lake City was towed off the Southern California coast on May 28, 1948, where she was used as a target ship and ultimately sunk during that process. Pensacola would outlive her sister by a few months before she was also sunk as a target ship on November 10, 1948. However, she was sunk off the Washington coast, about as far away from Salt Lake City as it was possible, while still being off the American West Coast. Used for the same test, sunk in the same way, Pensacola and Salt Lake City are, nonetheless, quite far away from one another. However, as we have not found their wrecks, it is time to move on to the destroyers. Here, I will mostly just list their names and fates, as there are many more of them still remaining to be found. And frankly, most were sunk around the same time and around the same location, with a couple exceptions. Specifically, there are 11 destroyers that were expended after the crossroad test that have yet to be found. Anderson and Lamson stick out as special in the fact they were sent to the bottom by the initial test in this regard. Continuing that theme, let's look at the other exceptions to the rule with these destroyer wrecks. USS Conningham, I think, which was scuttled off the California coast in July 1948, and USS Hughes, which was sunk as a target off the Washington coast in October of 1948. Maybe. I've seen that listed as her fate, but I've also seen her listed as scuttled off Kwajalein, or off the coast of California, in the case of Navsource, which has the fascinating image on screen of her scuttling, with both her extreme fore and aft ends missing. Of the online sources I found, I'd be most inclined to trust Navsource on this one, as they are generally fairly reliable. Regardless, Hughes was the last Sims-class destroyer to be expended, so she is an interesting wreck to look for. As for the remaining nine destroyers, they all seem to have suffered, more or less, the same fate. Towed off the coast of Kwajalein, and either scuttled or sunk as a target. I will go through them and list their name, class, and date of sinking, but there's not a whole lot more to go off here. Right. As said, I'm just going to run through this, giving the name, class, and day of sinking for each of these destroyers. Let's begin with USS Mayrant, a Benham-class destroyer sunk on March 18th, 1948, off of Kwajalein. Next comes USS Mustin, a Sims-class destroyer sunk by gunfire on April 18th, 1948. Then there's USS Ralph Talbot, a Bagley-class destroyer that was sunk in deep water on March 8th, 1948. She's a bit more well-known, if only for being used as stock footage in documentaries and the old HBO series, The Pacific. That aside, Talbot's sister ship, USS Mugford, would also be sunk off Kwajalein on March 22, 1948. The next on the list is of a different class, though, in USS Rind, another Benham-class destroyer that was sunk on March 22, 1948. Another destroyer sunk by gunfire, as well as another Benham-class, 
USS Stack was sent to the bottom on April 24th, 1948. Continuing the theme, we next come to USS Trip, which is yet another Benham-class destroyer sunk by gunfire. Though she was sunk on February 3rd, 1948, as her hull was evidently in such poor shape that it was difficult to keep her afloat. And if you're getting worried about this continuing on much longer, there's only two more left. USS Wainwright, a Sims-class destroyer, sunk on July 5th, 1948, as a target. And finally, USS Wilson, which is another Benham-class destroyer, sunk on March 8th, 1948. If it feels like I'm getting a bit jokey with the Benham thing, you could call the waters off Kwajalein the Grave of the Benhams, and you wouldn't be wrong. There were only 10 of these destroyers built, two of which were lost during the war. Of the eight that survived, five of them were ultimately sunk off the shores of this Pacific island. For those wondering, the other three to survive the war, USS Ellet, USS Lang, and USS Sterrett, were all sold for scrap in late 1947. I almost hope to see an expedition off Kwajalein in my lifetime, as having three different classes of destroyer to find, in addition to Pennsylvania, would make for quite an interesting thing to look at. That aside, time to look at submarines now. This will be the last group I look at in any real detail, though. While several submarines would survive the crossroads tests, two were sold for scrap and thus have no wreck to find, those being the USS Dentuda and the USS Parch. Of the wrecks, then, you have Apagon and Pilotfish, both resting at the bottom of Bikini, and already covered in the last video. That leaves four submarines that have yet to be discovered. These are USS Sea Raven, USS Skate, USS Skipjack, and USS Tuna. All four of which were sunk off the California coast in late 1948, and all four of which have yet to be rediscovered. To look at them in order, USS Sea Raven, the sole Sargo class representative here, survived the test with only minimal damage. She would not end up being recommissioned as a training submarine, however, instead being expended as a target off California on September 11th, 1948. Next we have USS Skate. This Balao-class submarine had her conning tower torn up by the Able Blast, but she otherwise escaped major damage. The same went for the Baker test, which did no physical damage, but left the submarine heavily irradiated irradiated enough that she was expended by means of torpedo test on October 5th, 1948. Then there's the next submarine, the Salmon-class USS Skipjack. She probably has the most interesting story of these four submarines, because she was sunk twice. The Baker test sent her to the bottom of Bikini, though she was subsequently salvaged. This marks her as unique, considering that both Apagon and Pilotfish saw failed salvage attempts. However, Skipjack would not end up returning to service in spite of the salvage effort. She would instead be sunk again on August 11th, 1948. This makes her a rare case of a ship that was sunk as a target twice over. That just leaves USS Tuna a Tambor-class submarine. She only saw minor damage during the atomic bomb tests before she was towed off to Pearl Harbor. After a couple months in Hawaii, she was then sent off to the West Coast, where she was studied for a bit, before ultimately being sunk off the West Coast on September 24th, 1948. None of these submarines have been found in the years since, though they would be interesting wrecks to look at, especially Skipjack. With that, though, we come to the end of the video. All that remains to list are attack transports, LSTs, and various other auxiliaries which would be a lot of time for vessels that I imagine most people aren't terribly interested in, so I will leave off by saying that quite a few were sunk off Kwajalein, joining the graveyard of atomic wrecks, dotting the seabed off that island. And thus does the look at the wrecks of Operation Crossroads come to an end. In the future, I would be happy to do further videos, should any of the missing wrecks be discovered. However, I don't know when that could happen. Petrol is no longer in the business of shipwreck hunting. I am unaware of any expeditions planned by Kaladin or Ocean Infinity. Hopefully more wrecks will be found, but I, for one, am unaware of when that could happen.
Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.